Hey guys, today we're going to look at one of my favorite decks. This deck, I my friend made it. It's his deck. I play with it. It's a very fun deck. It is called 13 Planeswalkers. And actually, we're going to add Narset to it. So now it's going to be like 16 Planeswalkers. Uh, the deck is incredibly fun. Essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to gain some life, make cards that are hard to attack you, and then that's it. So sideboard, you have two Whisperwood Elementals. One burn away. Burn away is actually, it's not as good. Maybe I need a replacement card, but it's a cyborg. A Sarkhan, dra the Dragon Speaker, two Savage Knuckle Blades, uh, two Nylea's Disciplines, mainly to gain the life, and two Negates against control. Uh, and also, you have Destructive Reveille, uh, one Disdainful Stroke, uh, an Ugin, and a Nisa from the sideboard. So you have Sarkhan, Nisa, and Ugin from the sideboard. All very, very good cards. They come in. It's very difficult to pilot this deck. That's the only bad thing about this particular deck. You don't really know how to pilot it again unless you have done it enough times. Now, you're, you have a Monastery Siege. You have a Roast. You have a bunch of Anger the Gods against tokens, essentially. You have Lightning Strike. A Lightning Strike being one of the best cards. You do not run four because sometimes getting red is tough. Which is kind of weird because Anger the Gods is just that good. You also have a mixture, two Disdainful Strokes in the main board. Remember you have one in the side, so you have three in total. You have Reality Shift. Reality Shift is very good, so it destroys the target creature and that the creature's owner gets to manifest a card. Very good. And Aether Sprout, also a semi-decent card. Now here is where you pretty much Dirtle them to oblivion. Uh, hornet nest, you have three different hornets nest. You have a bow of Nylea. You have a hornet queen. Four crew fixes, Corsair crew fix, which is still one of the best green cards, if not the best green card. It gains you lots, lots of life. Very good against a 2-4 body that gains you life and gets you land. And lastly, you have four keratids. The keratids being, again, a nice wall and also you your cards are very mana intensive so a carotid kind of it really is necessary four carotids four crucers absolutely necessary for this type of deck uh very good walls now your mana base we're going to go straight to mana base and not talk about the planeswalkers because i do want to save them as a surprise uh two temples of abandon two temples of mystery a temple of epony uh, only because we don't have two of them. A Frontier, Frontiers, two Mana Confluences, a Rugged Mountain, uh, two Shivering Reefs, four Windswept Heaths, and the other two cards are Yagamir's Coast. So two Yagamir's Coast. Essentially, you have two of every type of land that supports these colors. Two Mountains, and then two Forest. So although you have four fetch lands, you only have five basics. Sometimes the fetch lands get stranded, but you d have a lot of flexibility, but against aggro decks you would be taking a tremendous amount of damage now let's get to the fun part planeswalkers a two sarkhan unbroken a kiara a ugin a sarkhan so you have a ugin and you have a sarkhan in the sideboard two chandra pyromancers so you have a lot of flexibility on each planeswalker is very different some of them are incredibly mana intensive chandra is actually one of the harder ones to put out but the Planeswalker that protects your other Planeswalkers, of course, is Xenoghost. Xenoghost being uh, very, very important in this deck. It makes that 2-2 token that can attack, block. I mean, it's very, very good in the deck. It also can produce a ton, a ton of mana in this deck. So overall, it is not a extremely competitive deck, but it is very fun. And I recommend playing it.